Now in this video we'll continue with uh, the static routing what we have discussed in the previous concept. So uh, the only difference is like uh, we'll, we'll, we just add one more router. Okay. So in the previous example we have seen how to do static routing with two routers. What if, if I have one more branch office? So if you remember in the static routing the more bigger the size of the network uh, number of lines you need to configure. So that's one of the major drawback. Let's try to see how, how to configure the static routing if you have more than three routers. Okay, so in my scenario, I'm going to take these three routers. And if you remember, uh, you know how to assign the IP addresses. So the basic prerequisite for this lab here is, I'm assuming that the IP addresses is pre-configured, the basic setup, the IP addresses and the connectivity, everything is done. And then I have also verified the interface status. The interfaces are up and up. Okay. So if you want, you can go and verify. I have already pre-configured those things on the router one. If I go and verify show IP interface brief, I can see my interfaces are up and up. And on the router one, I got two interfaces, one in the LAN and the other one in the WAN. So let's go to router two on the router two also. We are going to command line on the router 2. We are going to say show IP interface brief f0 by 0 182.168.2.100 and then 10.2 and 11.1. And on the router 3, I am going to command line and then I am going to show IP interface brief and the show IP interface brief all the interfaces are up, all the three interfaces, two interfaces are up and up. Now, if they are not up up, uh, we have seen how to do troubleshooting as well. You have to just go with those steps. So I have pre-configured this IP addressing and also the connectivity and all the interfaces are up. And my requirement is I want to ensure that this 192.168.1.network network should be able to communicate with 192.168.2.network network users and also should be able to communicate with 192.168.3.network. network. So that's something what I want. But by default, they will not communicate because we need to do some routing concepts. So we need to implement some routing. So even if you want, you can go and verify. So if I go to one of the PCs here, 192.168.1.1, and if I just view IP config, and if I try to ping to 192.168.2.1, I'm not able to ping. You can see the reply is coming from the router, and the router is saying uh, it doesn't know how to reach 2.network. So similar way, the same thing, I'm trying to do the same thing for 3 dot network also. Uh, it will not send because the router 1 do not have any information about 192.168.2.network network and 192.168.3.network. network. Now our job is to configure the routing. In my scenario, I'm going to use static routing. <clears throat> so let us start with the router 1 first. So on the router 1, the first thing we need to figure out total how many networks we have here. So in my scenario, I got complete total five networks. I got three LAN interfaces, one, two, three. And then I got two WAN interfaces. I got the WAN interfaces. So total there are five networks, 192, 168.1.0 network, and 192.168.2.0 network, and then 192.168.3.0 network in the LAN. And then there is some 10.0 network, and then I got 11.0 network. So 10 dot network and 11 dot network, they are on the WAN interfaces. So 10 and 11 here and 1 dot, 2 dot and 3 dot network on the LAN interfaces. So by default, the router 1 knows about how many networks. The router 1 knows about this network, which is connecting on F0 by 0 because it is directly connected. And the router 1 knows about this network, that is 10 dot network. It is also connected on, <coughs> on S0 by 0, right? So the router one don't know about 192.168.2.0 network, 3.0 network and 11.0 network. So why? Because this 2.0 network is not directly connected and this is also not directly connected and this is also not directly connected. So we need to tell to the router that to reach those networks, it has to use uh, the next hop something, you know, whatever, the static route has to be configured. So we need to go to config mode and then we need to say IP route, destination network ID is 192.168.2.0 network. To reach 2 dot network, we are going to say 255, 255, 255, And the next hop address will be to reach this network, the next hop will be 10.002. So that is, we have to go via router 2. And the next hop address is 192.160, 10.002 uh, is the next hop. So similar way, 
uh, once you write this entry you'll see this network as static route learn and to reach this network we have to go via 10.002 that's the next hop but what if this user in the LAN want to communicate with 3 dot network okay now once we configure this step once we configure this statement here now 18162 dot network to reach this network we have to go via 10.002 but the problem is what if the user on the 192.168.1.0 network want to communicate with 192.168.3.0 network. So which means we need to write one more static route for 3. network. We need to say IP route. We need to tell the router 1 that router 1 if any packet is coming for 192.168.3.0 network that is 3.0 network and the submit mask is 255.255.255.0 and then to reach this next hop. So from the router 1 to reach 192.168.3.0 network what is the next hop? 10.002 or 11.002 so it will be always 10.002 so if you want to go to 3 dot network or if you want to go to 2 dot network you have to go via the next router now when you say next hop means it's always the next router okay so we cannot go directly to router 3 there is no direct route we need to go via router 2 only so the router 2 will be the next hop so here also the next hop address will be 10.002 so which means if I have any packet destined for 3 dot network, the router 1 sends a router 2 and the router 2 will take care to forward to router 3. That's the router 2 job. So once we add this line, the router 1 knows about this network and it also goes via 10.002. Now there is one more static route we need to add for 11 dot network. It's not mandatory but uh, recommended to add even though it is a man interface. So I'm going to say that on the router 1 that if any packet destined for 11 dot network with a submit mask of 255.255.255.0, the next top is 10.002. Now from the router one to reach this 11 dot network, you have to go via 10.002, the next top. Now if you see the difference between the static routing what we did in the previous lab and this lab, when you have more number of routers or the more number of networks you add, the more number of static route we need to add. So that's one of the major drawback with the static routing. As the size of the network increases, uh, we need to increase uh, the number of commands also we need to configure. The more number of commands we need to configure also. Okay, so once we configure this on the router 1, again the same thing we do on the router 2 also. So let's do the same thing on the router 2. So I'm going to take this diagram here. The same diagram. So let's do it on the router 2. So on the router 2 also total how many networks we have. So I got total there are 5 networks 192, 168, uh, 1 dot network, 2 dot network and 3 dot network in the LANs and 10 dot network and 11 dot network on the BAN interfaces. And the router 2 knows about 10 dot network. It is directly connected on S0 by 0. And the router 2 knows about 11 dot network. It is directly connected on S0 by 1. And the router 2 knows about 192.168.2.0 network. It is also directly connected on F0 by 0. So on the router 2, there are three directly connected interfaces. And the router 2 don't know about 1. Dot network because it is not directly connected. So we need to write the static route for 1. Dot network. And also we need to write the static route for 192.168.3.0 network. So how to write? Same commands. Go to router 2. We need to go to we need to say IP route. Destination network ID is 192.168.1. network and the submit mask is 255.255.255.0 and the next hop IP address is 10.0.0.1. So if you want to go to from the router 2 to reach this network, you have to go via 10.0.0.1. That's the next hop. Now once we add this line, the router 1 knows about this network via static routing via 10.0.0.1 so similar way the same thing we need to do on the router 2 for another network that is for 3 dot network so to reach 192.168 3 dot network from the router 2 the next stop is what 255.255.255.0 and the next stop is 10.00 not 10.002 it's 11.002 so from the router 2 to reach 192.168 uh, 3 dot network the next top address is 11.002 so once we add these statements you will see 
uh, this route also learn via static routing via 11.002 so the same thing we need to do on the router 3 also so the router 3 i'm going to configure that directly so let's go ahead and and do the same thing on the router 3 but, but i'll directly get into the command line okay so let's start from the router 1 whatever the commands we discussed let's start from the router 1 if i give show ip route I can see router 2 is having only router 1 is having only two interfaces which are directly connected so i'm going to configure the static route for the remaining three networks so to reach 2.0 network 255.255.255.0 what's the next stop 10.002 and to reach 192.168.3.0 network also the next stop is 10.002 right if you see the diagram here this is my diagram and also to write to reach 192 11.0 network the next stop is 10.002 now for all the routes that's common next stop the next stop defines the direction and that next stop address should be correct if you give the wrong next stop uh, it, it defines the wrong direction so it may not work so ensure that you are giving the right next stop address now once i add these three commands whatever we discussed now you'll see the three static routes has been added on the router one. So let's do the same thing on the router two. On the router two, if I go and check on the router two, router two is uh, having three networks which are directly connected: 10 door network, 11 door network, and 192.168.2 door network. And then we need to add the static route for the remaining two networks. That is one dot network, one ninety two one six zero one dot network, two five five two five five two five zero, and the next operator is ten dot zero zero one. So similar way to write the static route for one ninety two one six zero three dot network, the next operator is eleven dot zero zero two. So exactly the same thing from the router two to reach one dot network, the next stop is ten dot zero zero one, and from the router two to reach three dot network, the next stop is ten dot zero eleven dot zero zero two. Now once we add this line, now the router 2 also have an information of each and every network. So let's finally do on the router 3. <coughs> on the router 3, again I got two directly connected interfaces. You can see here, show IP route. The router 3 knows about 11 dot network and 192.163 dot network. Now this is actually 3 dot network. Okay. <coughs> So let's go to router 3 and then configure the static route for the remaining 3 networks. So I'm going to say 192.168.2.0 network, 255.255.255.0, what's the next stop? 11.001. Uh, so from the router 3 to reach 192.168.3.0 network, the next stop address is 11.001. Similar way from the router 3 to reach 1.0 network, the next stop address is same, 11.001. Let's write down that also. So to reach 192.168.1.0 network, the next stop is 11.001. Even to reach 10 dot network, that is the WAN interface, the next stop address is 11.001. So if I give show IP route, I can see the static route on the router 3, which is manually configured by the administrator here. Now, once we configure all the static routes, now I should see the communication should happen between this, uh, all these computers. Let's let's go and verify from 1.1, trying to generate the ping messages to 2.1 and 2.2, and also to 3.1. So you're able to see the reply. It confirms that on the router one, uh, the routing is perfect. So let's go to router one and try to generate a ping to 192.163.1. So last time when I tried to ping, it was not pinging last time. Now I should see the reply message. <coughs> Now you can see the reply is coming, 3.1. And if I try to ping to 2.1 also, you should see the reply is coming. Okay, so 2.1. So even if you want, you can try trace out commands, trace to 192.163.1. Uh, you can see the trace also clearly says that First the packet goes to 192.168.1.100 and then goes to 10.002 and then goes to 11.002 and before it reaches 192.168.3.1. So 
So the same thing you can see here 1.100, 10.2, 11.2, and then 1013, 3.1. So similar way, the more number of networks you are adding here, the more number of static routes we need to add. That's one of the major disadvantages here in the static routing. If you remember, the more number of routers you add or more number of branches we have, the more number of static routes we need to add because you have to manually write the route for each and every destination and administrators should have a clear idea on uh, how they are connected, what is the next stop information and compulsory you need to know the destination network ID. That's what we have discussed in our basic theory classes of static routing. So probably in my next section, we are getting into more in detail on understanding how the routing process is going to work, uh, whatever the routing we are going to use, whether it is static or dynamic.